Hello everyone, my name is Reese Stevenson and I am a CWC presenter and proud ambassador of the children's mental health charity Place to Be, who have teamed up with BAFTA Kids and Oak National Academy to create the 2021 Schools Time Capsule. And I'm so excited that you and your class are taking part. Now, this past year has been a strange one for many of us, but especially you with home learning and many of you not being able to see your friends and family. The 2021 Schools Time Capsule is giving children and young people the chance to reflect on the past school year and what it's been like for them. One of the ways you can share your experiences of the past year is through art or photography. But before we get started, here are some top tips. Hiya, I'm Ricky, but you might know me as the Art Ninja. I'm an animator and artist, and I like to express myself by drawing, painting, animating, taking photographs, and generally getting creative any way I can. Now the past 12 months have been challenging, you know, they've been quite stressful but the time we were given has offered opportunities we wouldn't normally have. I've tried to use the time to look inward to find out what makes me happy and to look forward to exciting things happening in the future. Right, so I've got some top tips for art reflections. Now I've structured mine as a kind of journey through time. Now you can choose one to help you reflect or you can join me and take the entire journey. So. Here are my top tips for your art reflections. One, let's start at the beginning and think about the past. How are things before lockdown? I mean, we're all younger, we maybe had different interests, different hobbies, maybe we like different music. Now, colour can help us convey how we felt about these moments. I like to use warm shades like reds, oranges and yellows to convey a warm, happy feeling. And then maybe colder shades such as blues, greens and maybe some purples to think about the moments that we miss it's just as important to remember the lows as the highs. All of these moments, they belong to us and our experiences deserve to be made into art. Number two, our present. Now I don't know about you, but I've made and collected lots of knickknacks and bits and bobs over the last year. From letters and photos sent from friends to new skills or habits picked up in lockdown. Now one way to commemorate these is to turn them into a collage. It's a snapshot of what life was like for us. Now what you can do is you can cut these bits up and make them into something abstract or you can arrange them into a picture and just stick them down. If you want you can add some paint, a bit of colour, maybe some crayon or textured bits because a collage doesn't have to be flat. Finally, number three. What exciting things do we hope the future will hold? What are we looking forward to? Maybe hanging out with our friends, hugging our favourite people or taking up a new hobby? Sure, the future can be a little scary because we don't know what's going to happen, but that can be exciting too. The future can be a fun, colourful place that we want to visit, so we should represent it as such. Let's use bright, bold colours. Let's make our shapes round and fluid. The future is yet to be formed, but having a positive attitude to it can help shape it into a colourful, happy place. Hi, my name's Sarah Lee. Um, I'm a photographer. I've worked with BAFTA for seven years now. My sort of day job is that I'm a freelance contract photographer for The Guardian. And as a photographer, I do my own work. I published a book last year called West of West about the end of Route 66 in America. And my work appears in magazines and very occasionally the National Portrait Gallery and it's quite varied. When I take a picture that I feel represents what I want or is a kind of development of my skills, that is incredibly good for my mental health. My normal job involves lots of portraits, loads of interaction of being with people, which is one of the things I like most about photography and doing it for a profession. I like meeting people and being connected to other people. And in lockdown that all stopped. But then I realised, well, I still had my phone, and my phone has a pretty decent camera, and so I went for walks and I started getting interested in landscapes, noticing details about where I live. I live in Camden, and I've lived there for the best part of 25 years, but I've never seen it the way I did in lockdown. I started to notice things because I had all this time to do walks. So I actually created a series, and I was lucky it was published, that gave me real creative satisfaction, and that have to say, felt like a total lifesaver. This year's BAFTA was at the Royal Albert Hall again, but incredibly scaled back. All the nominees were on Zoom, and they only had 
think it was 14 or 15 presenters. And each of those celebrity, actor, musician, you know, famous person, presenters, um, had to arrive on the red carpet by themselves. So they were very staggered. Priyanka Chopra was presenting an award and her plus one was Nick Jonas. And he was just standing back, taking pictures of her on the red carpet with his phone. And because there wasn't much else going on compared to a normal year, I was able to stand back and kind of capture that sort of moment. That's exactly the kind of thing I love about the photography I do with BAFTA. It's trying to get those funny little intimate moments where instead of them being very famous, polished celebrities, that was a husband and wife moment, which I, you know, feels like a privilege to be able to observe that. And that's really what I'm trying to capture. Yeah, I love being a fly on the wall to see these incredibly interesting people who I see on the massive cinema screen and I get to kind of hover and, you know, sort of, yeah, almost sometimes be unobserved watching them and trying to capture moments, you know, with my camera. My first tip, which I would say to anyone who's interested in photography, don't get hang up on the kit. The best camera you can ever have is the one that's in your hand at the time. And if that's your phone, that's fine too. Don't feel intimidated into not taking pictures because you feel you've got the wrong kit. Any camera is a good camera. My second tip would be to try and be really conscious of light. Everything in photography is to do with light. Uh, you compose a picture based on what the light is doing and how it works in a scene. Black and white uses light about tone and texture. Colour uses light differently, but all of it is about what the light is doing in the shot. Try and think of it. If you've got a subject and the sun is behind them and you're not using any artificial light, they'll probably be more of a silhouette. You just try and look at a scene and think what the light's doing. And when you've taken time to think about that, in my experience, that will always slow you down and make you more considered about what the actual final image is going to look like. It's the same principle that you would use if you were drawing a picture or painting a watercolour. You have to choose a frame and think about it. Um, and I think it's very easy to be unconsidered when taking pictures and then a bit disappointed why they don't capture what it was you were thinking and feeling at the time. My third tip is don't be intimidated by trying to think of a subject. There are subjects all around us. Shoot, if in doubt, shoot what you know. You will have people in your life or places or things that are of interest. You can turn through photography the pedestrian things in your life into beautiful things if you use your eye. Um, and you, you're bringing yourself to every photograph you take has your vision, your sensibility in it. Um, and the more you do this, the better you get. Um, like anything, like playing an instrument, like sport, any of it. Practice and it will develop your talent. Hi, I'm Shemaine and I'm from the Art Room team at Place To Be and I enjoy expressing myself through art. Art can be a great way to express yourself and understand your thoughts and feelings. Whether you're drawing, painting, making a collage, or even building on something. Over the past 12 months, I felt quite discouraged not being able to go outside and see friends, but making art together on a video call has really encouraged and helped me. This project is a chance for you to express what it was like during this past year. Imagine creating something for someone to see in the future. You might want to show an important thing, feeling or memory. It's totally up to you. Here are my three top tips for your art reflection. Tip one, if you get stuck on what to create, take a look at the imagine and create sections in the project pack. There you'll find a book, a warm up activity and a list of possible ways you can go about expressing yourself through art. These can inspire you and get your creative juices flowing. Tip two, take your time with it. You can do it over a couple of days or hours. It's up to you. Remember, there's no right or wrong way when it comes to making art. Feel free to go about this however you choose to. Last but not least, top tip three, 
Remember, you don't need to create the perfect image. This activity is all about expressing your thoughts and feelings. So, it's more to do with what's it like to imagine and make your art. Amazing tips! Huge thank you to Ricky, Sarah and Shymane. Now it's your turn. And remember, this isn't about being the best at painting, drawing or taking a photograph. It's about sharing your story and expressing your thoughts and feelings. So, take your time, help each other out and we can't wait to see what you create. Bye!